Hey guys, Jazz over here and welcome back to the Diabetes channel. November is known as Blue November because it is Diabetes Awareness Month and we thought it'll be super fun today to take you back a little bit in time and take you down memory lane and give you a brief history of type 1 diabetes. <laughs> In 1921, the discovery of insulin. Frederick Banting, with his student assistant Charles Best, um, uh, you know, actually put insulin into a dog which they had removed the pancreas out of and found that the dog's sugar levels were coming down. All four men were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology of Medicine, and those four people are responsible for discovering insulin. We move on to January 11th, 1922. The first time insulin was used on a person to actually treat type 1 diabetes. And the little boy, 14 year old boy, uh, Leonard Thompson, was the first person to actually receive this life saving uh, treatment to control type 1 diabetes. One year later, 1923, commercial production of insulin actually started. Ellie Lilly and Novo Nordisk, which are still farmers today, began the production of insulin in 1923. 1941, uh, tablets and strips for urine testing became available, widely available. Uh, earlier, there used to be Benedict solution, which was much more difficult to mix. But in the late 1940s, we actually got in the urine test strips to test your glucose levels. We still didn't have the RBS finger pricks yet. 1949, Rachel Levine, a doctor, actually discovered that insulin was like a key. The example that we keep giving today that insulin is a key that opens up the cell doors to allow glucose to get into the cell was discovered in 1949 by a physician called Rachmel Levine. Again in 1949 was the first approved insulin syringe. Um, Becton Dickinson and company began producing the glass syringes for insulin administration. This is not for type 1 diabetes, but in 1955, the first oral medication for diabetes uh, became available, sulfonylurea, which is for treating type 2 diabetes, but again, a big milestone in the history of diabetes. 1959 was an important year as a milestone. Um, Salomon Burson and Rosalind Yalo, two PhD professors, uh, figured a method to measure the insulin level in the blood, and they found out that certain people produced insulin and certain people had less insulin and that is when the distinction of the types of diabetes type 1 and type 2 came into play 1961 was the introduction of glucagon as a method to treat severe hypoglycemia um, again it was i think ellie lilly who began the first production of glucagon as an emergency life-saving treatment 1964 a big 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 milestone because the Ames company produced the first um, blood glucose test strips which were again with color coding um, and it was not till the 1970s that it was used for home testing but it was first only used in hospitals and clinics. 1970 the Ames company once again produced the first at home glucometer which was used in doctors' clinics. Earlier, it had to be a lab test report, but in 1970, the first portable home glucose testing kit was available. 1972, the U100 strength insulin was introduced. Earlier, you used to only get U40 and U80, but a standardized version of this was introduced in 1972 with U100 insulin strength. 1976, the first wearable insulin infusion pump was developed. It was very big, so to say. So it was not used um, frequently. It was used to manage severe DKA. Uh, but at the same time, these infusion pumps were also meant for chemotherapy and other things like that. So uh, 1976 pumps come into play. 1977. What we all know today as an HPA1C three monthly test was actually developed in 1977. And A1C testing then for a long time became the gold standard test for um, management of diabetes. 
1978, the first portable insulin pump was introduced, not like the infusion pumps back there, but de designed specifically for insulin. But again, because of its large size, it was not used frequently. Um, the first commercial insulin pump was the Mini Med, which was introduced much later in 1983. But uh, till then, in 1978, we had the first portable insulin pump developed. 1982 was a big year because in 1982, the FDA approved human insulin. Um, before human insulin was approved, it was going to be bovine insulin and insulin taken from cows and pigs that were used. But now in 1982, the first human insulin uh, was approved and it was a big milestone to later on getting into analogs. 1993, uh, the New England Journal of Medicine published a paper that talked about how tighter control with glucose can reduce long-term complications of type 1 diabetes. This is the era of a lot of research and development that began for uh, the diabetes and medical fraternity. But 1993 was when it was proven, so to say, that tighter control reduces complications. 1996. Fast-acting insulin is introduced. Lispro by Ellie Lilly was introduced and at the time it was the fastest acting insulin. But 1996 was a good year for type 1 diabetes. 1999. CGMs are approved. The use of continuous glucose monitoring devices to manage and monitor blood glucose levels for physicians is approved by the FDA in 1999. Again, not commercially used, but used as methods of diagnostics. It was approved in 1999. 2000, the millennial year. Sanofi introduces Lantus, the first ever long-acting insulin, a huge milestone in the development of basal bolus therapy. So 2000, Sanofi introduces Lantus and we still use Lantus very, very widely today. In the 2000s, we had the introduction of lots of different type 1 diabetes technology. So we had the tubeless pumps, the patch pumps, lots of different hybrid closed loop systems, which were introduced in the 2000s. In 2018, we had the first fully implantable continuous glucose monitor, the Eversense, uh, which is an implantable CGM that stays for up to six months introduced as well. So a lot of leap in tech uh, in the 2000s till the 2018s. Lots of development, lots of new ideas, lots of uh, closed loop and things like that. That was really, really a huge milestone for type 1 diabetes. In the late 2010s, we also had the introduction of the We Are Not Waiting movement, a patient-driven movement uh, to take type 1 diabetes treatment into their own hands and developed the first DIY, do-it-yourself artificial pancreas system, which really pushed industry to then go ahead and create their own FDA-approved versions of the same. Um, and here we are today in 2020, the year of the pandemic, no doubt, but um, I think it's very important to see how far we have come from having animal insulin to having analogs, from having glass syringes that need to be boiled to having flex pens with tiny, tiny needles, from having microwave sized um, infusion pumps to having small and discreet patch pumps, from having a urine tests to actually test your glucose levels to now having CGMs that give you trend arrows and time and range. So I think it's been a upward climb for sure. Are we there yet? No. Um, is the race to the cure gone away? Not at all. I think uh, it's still an upward climb, but to see so much technology, so much research and so much development done in the world of type 1 diabetes, I can definitely say that we do have a very, very bright, hopeful blue future ahead. So, we hope you enjoyed that video. A little bit of just a timeline and a history lesson for you all in Diabetes Awareness Month. Um, as always, stay safe in these times, stay happy, stay healthy, um, and happy World Diabetes Awareness Month, and be type 1 of a kind.